Nothing gets our blood pumping more than clamping a C-post in a bike stand. And even more so, we're gonna raise that controversy and discuss the dropper. So grab your pitchforks and follow along as we discuss some myths and facts and numbers about clamping a dropper seat post. Here at Park Tool, we've been clamping tubing for uh, about 60 years. That's a lot that's of tubing. A lot of tubing to clamp yep. over the years from right. clamping originally on the tubing of the frame itself. That's right. And as things change, we have to change, and how you work changes. Now we're seeing a lot of clamping up on the seat post, including dropper posts. Dropper post. Fairly new, and for me, new technology, and it's kind of fun. Anytime you get new technology, we like to start also talking to the component manufacturers, see what they're, they're saying, and it's quite a wide range, from the practical to, oh, be sure and never, ever look at this sideways. We've heard, don't touch it at all, uh -huh. the CYA. We've heard, compressed and then clamp on the lower. The, you get the this, this stanchion down here, it's supposed to give more support. Mm -hmm. We've heard fully extend it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why do we want to fully extend it? Uh, that's a good point. Two reasons, well, when we're working in the stands, we have a downward force. Mm -hmm. Let's see what can happen here. Uh-oh, backwards. On some posts, that can create a vacuum and the seals are not set up to be able to take that. It's so Right, right, the load they're assuming is down. It's not just working in it, for like me, when I'm lugging this bike over that log, I like to grab it by the saddle and pick up that bike. And if I keep doing this, I'm gonna be having some mushiness after the top, after mm -hmm. exchange of fluids. So we're saying- Some people, all, you know, a lot of people all the way up because sometimes they're gonna accidentally lift on the post to lift it up, right. that can cause issues. But if you're grabbing here up on the stanchion, what do we want? Clean. clean, we want clean here. So take a rag, wipe it out, you're not scratching. That is tough stuff. It is. Yeah. What is another solution that's kind of fun for the scratchies? Let's just show them. So you're in a hurry, you're not really ready to clean, you want something real clean, grab your glove, your mechanic glove. We grab one over here. Oh, there. Inexpensive nitrile. A rag, okay, but a rag's soft. This is grabby, mm -hmm. right? So, man, I can't move my fingers at all. Not at all. But still gentle. You'll hear some people say, gosh, just pull the post all the way out and, and put a dummy post in and then you're, you're clamping on that. And it sounds good on the surface, but for our shop people, practical? I, I don't think so. No. I, I, you know, just kind of running the numbers in favor of a shop because Shops, they need, to, they need to save money. They need to turn the lights on. They need to be yep. there. So they need to charge a reasonable amount of money for a service. So if they were doing a hydraulic post, mm -hmm. internally routed, I would have a set charge yep. that would be an hour, which is about, on average, across the country, across the US, about 70 US dollars. Mm -hmm. Four of those times coming in there to have a service done, and they had to remove that, pays for a brand new post. Right, and you may not want to, you may tell yourself, we can't charge a customer that. Maybe you shouldn't, but the point is, it's taken you a long time to pull out that post and put it back in to replace a bottom bracket and to do other service. Not so practical. Not so practical. So grabbing it, we feel practical, but let's look at, at the forces and what, but mighty crushing goes on here and what really happens. And the, and the twisting force of it, isn't uh, that bike twisting in the stand a ton? It's gonna rip right off. We're good. Well, let's find out. Let's see what happens when we give this the big squeeze. A lot's going on. The clamp is not actually the highest squeeze that we're seeing. The bike clamp, that is. The biggest clamp's gonna be right here. The seat collar. Is gonna be squeezing a lot more. And we can put some numbers to this. So we're gonna first think about the bolt that you're tightening, and they give you that nice torque ah, right on there. So I see I'm supposed to go to a six Newton meter torque, ah, tighten it up. How big is that thread? This is a common M6 thread. Now, our friends in the metric world, 
we're going to be speaking to the simple-minded people of fractional us. like us. Yep. Numbers that we, we can understand right away, but the numbers for you metric folks, the smarter people of the world. Down along the screen, right there. Okay. So we can convert this a little bit. So that's about 53 inch pound torque. If we know the size of the bolt, there's a nice estimate of the preload that it's putting on there. And we can run the numbers of what we have here, assuming a grease thread lowers the coefficient of friction. We're looking about 2,200 pounds Squeezinski force. That's a lot of force. Seems like over that, a ton of force. That's a ton. But that's, that's in a perfect world. That would be if this collar was distributing that force perfectly. But what we know is that is not so true. Mm -hmm. This collar point loads here and here, because this is being pulled in, this is being pulled in, this corner is being pushed here. Even if you locate your slot, if you have a single slot, if you will locate it over here, it is still displacing and point loading this mm -hmm. part on your tubing. Mm -hmm. Now let's pretend you have three slots and you want it to be here and here and here. It's gonna point load this whole section. So you're still gonna be loaded more on this side than over right. here. That's right. So it's gonna be a higher number than this at this point. But surely we're spreading things out with the height here. We can measure our height. So we're at home here, 85 128s. Mm -hmm. What the heck? And the diameter we know. So we can figure out the surface area. And here we've got about, um, whoa, what do we have? I'm saying 2.2. Luckily we have it written down. Yeah. 2.2 square inches inside. And uh, you spread that around. You take that, divide it into that. It's quite a bit of force. It's quite still a bit of quite force. a bit. What is it? 2.2, we're talking we're about a looking thousand. thousand, thousand pounds of squeezing force, per okay? Per square inch. Per square inch, per square inch, okay. So, how many thousands of pounds of pressure per square inch is our clamp causing? Well, it's probably gonna really be a lot because it's from part tool, but let's give it some numbers. We first have to figure out how much squeeziness it is. Load cell. So we got the load cell. That's right there. Are we, are we on here? Yeah, let's see what Calvin's okay. producing here. Oh man, that's the biggest number yet. That's oh. six, about 65 you got to. <sighs> that's good. That's yeah, good. that's a lot. So Whew. we put this in a clamp and we, we tightened it what we would consider pretty darn tight. Probably over tight from what we would right. normally be working yep. on. And uh, that number, what did we have We there? got about 200. 200. pressure. Yep. But it's not point loading, we're spreading it out. Now we don't get the full area, we have the groove here, we're okay. not clamping here, so we're only counting the contact here. So total pressure per square inch, yep. we're talking for our clamp with these jaw covers, yep. 61 per square per inch. pounds per square inch. Significantly lower, which by the way, is why you shouldn't use these to raise your saddle height and ride your bike with it. So don't ride with the clamp, it's not gonna hold your saddle. Exactly. Damage is coming from the, the clamp? Six, 61, well it's gotta be because when you put your bike up there, it's leveraging it. Oh, imagine it's gotta how be the twisting. leverage. Oh, it's that twisting, it's right? It's the twisting force. All that weight on the front, it's really gonna twist it over. It's true. Should we, should we measure this? Or I, just... I think we should measure it. Let's, yeah. get, let's, get, the, let's get our measure on. All right, we got the bike. A carbon fiber? No, we wanted something heavy, and we got it. We got about a 30, a 30 pound bike here. Aluminum frame, you know, decent components, but nothing too crazy. Mm -hmm. So let's put it up into our testing device here. This device is for testing torque wrenches. Mm -hmm. So it tests rotational load. So we're gonna put this up here in this fork that we made specifically for this purpose. We're gonna see how much load we've got. Right, even though this isn't a dropper, we're showing you the kind of load that just the weight of the bike when you're working on it has. So we have about a 30 pound bike, we have it about level, and we're generating about 20 foot pounds. This, we have to multiply this by something, right? Or, or is this just no. a number? 20 foot pounds is the twisting load on your post. But what, didn't, weren't we just talking about 900 yeah. foot pounds? Pounds, of all sorts of higher numbers. This isn't so much. 
That's 20 foot-pounds, if you think of a torque wrench, that's really not keeping your crank arm tight if you mm. were to put that on a, on a wrench. What we're saying, not a whole lot going on here. Rotational is not going to be the, the game breaker for you. Mm -hmm. This is perfectly fine and suitable for your post. Right, the post can take that kind of load. And it's not nearly what you're going to have. You get your glutes. Put your on Put your tushy on there. And started pedaling. So you've got all of that weight here pulling it back. And then let's hit any kind of bump and spike that load. Yeah, just hitting, you know, I say just, but a curb is a big object. You sit down, you hit a curb, think about the amount yes. of weight that is transferred You're into. Double and triple that amount. Posts can take this. They need to pick this. They need to, we'd have an issue if they could That's right, but people falling all over the place. Let's get a grasp of the situation and conclude this. Step one. Raise that post right up. Yep, we don't wanna be picking the bike up by accident, creating that vacuum. Yep, step two would be if you have enough space, clamp below the collar, not on the collar, on that lower. So we got this much room, we're good to go. We don't have that much room. Clean, clean inside. Grabbing the stanchion. Clamp away. We're ready to work. Thanks for joining us. Please clamp. Thanks for clamping. Thanks for watching. You can find hundreds more videos like this one on our channel here on YouTube. And we're constantly working on more. So be sure to subscribe for the latest content from Park Tool. And check out our website, which has even more content to help you make your bike better.